Living Seed Media brings to you God's Word, which is His comprehensive equipment for changing lives. May the Lord impact your heart as you encounter His Word. For further inquiry or counsel, contact Peace House, P.O. Box 971, Boko, Benue State, Nigeria. Telephone numbers 0703 0336 59. 0703 768 Email address lsmedia at livingseed.org or visit our website at www.livingseed.org Let us sit back and listen as the servant of God brings forth the word of life. Holy Spirit, the fire you have set shall remain unquenchable. The work you have started shall remain unstoppable. The outpouring of your spirit upon our lives, it shall never run dry in the name of Jesus Christ. Until this generation has come to acknowledge you as the Lord. Thank you, Father. In Jesus Christ's name, we have prayed. Amen. Please now be seated and we take the final charge tonight and then we do the final prayers and we shall be commissioning you. You'll be moving forth as God will be shooting you and launching you forth in the name of Jesus Christ. And we will hear great news about you heaven will rejoice over you satan will regret about your case in the name of jesus christ hallelujah we have come to a very important point at which the lord will be drawing the bow and the arrows to set you on course and to set you on fire. There are two young people that I intend to draw your attention to as we conclude this meeting and as you are going. You have known generally about Gideon and there are many things about Gideon that we can spend all our time talking about. But there's just one or two issues that I wish I would lay before you tonight. And then there's another young man called Joash that I intend to show you about him tonight because... I'm trusting God that you will not cut short this revival. You will not stop short of his fullness. All that God wants to do by your hand shall be done. The extent to which God intends to travel with you, you will get every inch of it in the name of Jesus Christ. Turn to the book of Judges. And in a moment, chapter 6 is all I want to show you very quickly about. And then we move to Joash. And by then, we will have taken our bearing as we are going this night. Judges, chapter 6. Verse 11 up to verse 16 is all we can deal with and go away from there. And there came an angel of the Lord and sat under an oak which was in Ophrah that pertained 
unto Joash the Abiezrite. And his son Gideon threshed wheat by the winepress to hide it from the Midianites. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him and he said to him, The Lord is with you, thou mighty man of valor. And Gideon said unto him, O oh, my Lord, if the Lord be with us, why then is all this befalling us? And where be all his miracles which our fathers told us of? Say, did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? But now the Lord has forsaken us and delivered us into the hands of the Midianites. And the Lord looked upon him and he said, Go in this thy might, and thou shalt save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Have I not sent you? And he said to him, O oh my Lord, wherewith shall I save Israel? Behold, my family is poor in Manasseh, and I am the least in my father's house. And the Lord said to him, Surely I will be with you, and thou shalt smite the Midianites as one man. You can take time to read the rest of the story of Gideon at your spare time. And you can take time to study his response and the practical steps he took immediately after that. You can go through all of that. And you can read how God actually took him from nowhere and indeed he brought the Midianites' oppression. He brought it to a stop. And all that happened. But because this night is not the night for teaching, it's the night for charging you. I'll just draw few issues quickly from those few verses and then I'll go off from there quickly to look at the second man second young man that you must take note of as you go from here what is peculiar about this commissioning that God was bringing unto Gideon number one let me inform you that the children of Israel they have backslidden and they have misbehaved and as a result of their disobedience to God God has brought them under a very very terrible oppression of the Midianites the oppression was so much that they have been impoverished when they make farms the Midianites will wait until the time of harvest. And then they will come into their farm and do what? And clear everything and leave nothing for the people who farmed. And if you talked, they beat you to death. To the point that the children of Israel and their children, they only dwell in caves. And if they were going to ever go to their farms, they will make sure that no Philistines is around. So they will quickly, quickly, quickly do whatever they could do to go and hide. And this was the situation and the children of Israel began to cry to God. They began to cry. You can read all of that. And the Bible said they cry of the children of Israel rose to the Lord because of the Midianites. So the Lord began to send, he sent a prophet unto the children of Israel which said to them, Thus says the Lord God, a message was going on to call them to repentance. 
But you see, whenever God wants to answer the cry of any people, he looks for a man that has a heart that he can use. I want to tell you, more and more as we have prayed, more and more as I continue to uh, seek the face of God about this Congress, more and more I hear God speaking emphatically that there are young men and women here that he has gathered who will become answers to the problem of our country. Who will become the solution to the recklessness on your campuses. Listen. When we came to the point this morning and we couldn't progress and the Holy Spirit said, off, allow me to deal with my people. I want to move in the congregation. I want to move from heart to heart. I want to put something in their lives. I want to, I want to equip them for their mandate. And I stood aside to say, Lord, have your way with whatever you want to do with your people. He continued to whisper to my heart that hearing gathered, they may look tiny in my eyes. And for some, it might look as if they were not serious. Some may think that what was happening to you in the afternoon was not genuine. But I want to tell you very frankly that that which God began to say to you, one girl was kneeling down here and the Spirit of God was speaking very seriously to her about what she must rise up to do. She said, but I'm afraid. And I saw a Gideon inside that sister. I saw that several of you have been given an assignment. An assignment that is bigger than your experience. An assignment that is bigger than your outlook. An assignment that is bigger than all your background put together. And yet, heaven is focusing on you. You are going to become answer to the cry of the land in the name of Jesus Christ. And when God says, do not say, I am only a youth, it is very, very critical that you will understand what God has set about to do with your lives. And so when it was time for God to answer the cry, I hope you know there's a cry all over the land. There's a cry about corruption. There's a cry about exam practice. There's a cry about, about, about manipulation on our campus with exams, with admission, with everything. There's a cry. There's a cry about politics. There's a cry about economy. There's a cry about everything. There's a cry even about church. There's a cry even about pastors. You just don't know which pastor to trust. You don't know which one, instead of being a shepherd, is a wolf. There's a cry all over the land. But God says, stop mourning for Saul. I have found a king for myself. Go and anoint, anoint him for me. And I perceive that the cry, the mourning, the sign of our land, of our people, of our nation, of our educational sector is going to come to an end at your instance in the name of Jesus Christ. I perceive that you will arise and become an answer to this generation in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. 
Now, now, but where was God going to locate the answer to the cry of his people? He didn't go to the palace. So that you are not from the ivory tower, you are not from the palace, is not abnormal. That you are not the most prominent, even member of your fellowship in the university, is not strange. And that God went all the way and it is not your very senior sister or senior brother that God is confronting with this message is not strange. That God did not gather the Jim, 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 Jim power movers who make empty noise who comes around to parade that God compares some of you listen God compares some of you you don't even know why God said you must go to student congress this year you need to be there you have to be there and you are wondering I've never been to this place before I don't know what it is all about he said go there the fact that God particularly particularly selected you to be on the team that came some of you you are hearing me and you can remember how the other sister that should have got on the bus we don't know what happened how on the final time she said oh, I won't be able to make it again and you were almost discouraged whether you should still come because she's the one that knows this place. But somehow, something said, go. And you are here. Because there's a divine appointment over your life. And now tonight, as we begin to release you into that which heaven is demanding concerning you, God sent an angel who came and sat on an oak as if he's a normal person. As if it was not a supernatural thing that is about to happen. And as he came and sat upon an oak where Gideon Look at the description they gave Gideon. He sat under an oak which was an offering that belonged or pertained to Joash, the Abiezerites. And his son Gideon threshed wheat by the wine press in order to do what? To hide it from the Midianites. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him and said to him, Look at what the Lord said to him. What is it? The Lord is with you, thou mighty man of valor. Please hear what I have to say quickly. When God sees you, he does not just see your today. He calls into existence those things that be not as though they were. Those that have the eyes, the prophetic eyes, with which God looks at people. Hallelujah. Eh? God speaks about your future as if it's already here. God announces what you are going to become as if you have already become it. Because as far as God is concerned, if you do not tamper with his will, it's already done. Are you hearing me? If nothing goes wrong, if you did not turn away, if you did not turn back from following the Lord, that which God has said concerning you is as good as done.
and when the spirit began to speak to me this morning and said all that I have spoken concerning you you will fulfill it Ha! Ah, I just say father you who sees the end of a man from the beginning you have spoken again God has spoken concerning you again God has speaking I mean has spoken concerning that which is looking at the future but to God is already here so I saw God calling this man who has never fought a battle before are you hearing me Gideon has never done what fought one battle in his life Gideon has never shown anything he has never been a warrior what was he doing there what was he doing there he was stretching Ginecon. Ginecon. But when the angel of the Lord will address him, look at the address. See the address. I know some of you are hearing in your spirit how God is beginning to speak about your life, about your days, about what is going to happen through your hand. He said unto him, The Lord is with you. Thou mighty man of valor. Hmm. But presently, Gideon was an ordinary man. Gideon was a poor last born of his father who was nobody in the land of Israel. What did God see in his life that God said is a mighty man of valor? Let me quickly show you what God looks for. What God looks for. What does God look for in the man that he uses? There are too many things but just this one and then I go off. What did God see? And he addressed a man like Gideon, thou mighty man of valor. What did God see? What was God looking for? You will see now. And Gideon said to the Lord, to him, O oh my Lord, if the Lord be with us, why then is all this befalling us? And where be all his miracles, which our fathers told us of, saying, Did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? But now the Lord has forsaken us and delivered us into the hand of the Midianites. What, what, what did God see? Let me tell you. God looks for a man who is not satisfied with status quo. Anyone who is satisfied with complacency is useless as far as God is concerned. Any man who has no hunger, who has no thirst for something real, anyone who has no question about what is going on, anyone who is easily satisfied with all the gimmicks that is being played around in fellowships and in churches, they cannot stand where God is going. But if you are here and you have never stopped asking, where are your miracles? Why is church like this? Why is our fellowship so different from what the Bible teaches? Why are people of our own generation, why are they like this? different from what the Bible describes. Why? Why is the word of God not being real in my own hand? When God sees a man who is intolerant about sin, who is intolerant about compromise, who is intolerant about makeshift, 
who cannot be satisfied with human explanation. That's the man God is looking for. And I must tell you, there are several of such men in this meeting. You know, several of you, you have been asking questions. Several of you, you only kept quiet because people think you are a sadist. There are several of you that you have queried so many practices that people are bringing up and down. And you say, is this the reality? Is this the reality? Your heart has queried so many issues. I want to tell you, God has noticed it. And because you are a man who cannot be satisfied with anything less than God. Is there any person like that here? Let me see your hand up. Somebody say, I cannot settle until I see God in my generation. Let me see your hand up now. Yeah. 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 I didn't know that God particularly looks for such men. Those who are dissatisfied. Those who are asking, is there no other way? Where is the God of Elijah? Where is the God of our fathers? Where is the God the apostles preach about? Where is the God that spoke and people came out in mass in tears, repenting? Where is that God? The reason why revival tarries is because many prefer to be lukewarm. They prefer to explain away the emptiness of our time than cry to God for genuine visitation. And I remember when I was where you are, when I was in your shoes, a young man, I will go for fellowship and they will talk, 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 talk. Nothing happens. I will go and meet this one. I just see that they are playing gimmicks. I go to church, I'll see pastors using charm. <sighs> In my own days, all the big, big, big bishops, they are members of secret court and Oboni fraternity. And I'm saying, oh God, is this church and a permanent, irremovable body fell on my heart? That each time, the only books that were appealing to me in those days. It's not the faith books. It's not the book of how to make it. I'm not interested in prosperity. I don't want it. Only one, one thing. I want revival. So when you come into my uh, collection of books, you will see why revival tarries. You will see uh, why did God depart? How can God come back again? How can we see God again? Those are the kind of books I read. I lost appetite for everything. I wasn't interested in telling empty stories when I can't see so saved. I began to cry to God. I said, God, is it possible for me to preach one message and people will not recover from it for 10 years? I'm not interested in just joking and make people to say, yeah, 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 yeah. No. Can you make me a sharp instrument in your hand that pierces the heart of sinners? And God said, yes. This hunger that is in your heart, it is an hunger that will not be quenched until you see my glory. And I'm trusting God that you, you are seated in this meeting tonight and God is saying yes, go in this your might go in this your might 
if you understand what I'm talking about tonight, you will, you will understand why God is speaking to you. I was looking like a radical. I was looking like a non-conformist. In fact, people just thought that I was against anybody. They don't know that it is the cry of my heart. If I went to a, a fellowship and somebody stand and say, let somebody shout hallelujah, I say, for what? You know, let me tell you the truth. When the new things are happening, you don't tell people to shout hallelujah. Do you know what happens? It is spontaneous. If somebody has to tell me, shout hallelujah, so that the roof here can remove, I say, are you sincere? You want this roof to remove? Why are you making empty talk like that? Go and sit down. You know, I, I was. <laughs> if you sat by my side, when a, a preacher is doing like this, doing like this, doing like this, you hear me doing... Hey, what is all this? If you don't have something, to go and sit down, Joe. Kenny, what are you saying? What is the meaning of this? Those questions never left my heart. I'm looking for reality. I'm looking for God. I don't want makeshift. I wanted to say, God... If the Bible say, my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory, and it's not by begging people, can you prove yourself to me? Everything you see me doing here, I am deliberately asking God, if you say you are who you are, can I see you? Can you show me that we can do a work that does not need manipulation of collecting people's money from their pockets? And God said, yes, if you are looking for the truth, it's here. If you want to experience genuineness, I can give you. I said, that's what I want. That's all I want. So when these brothers were singing, you are all I want. I said, yes, these guys, these boys, they are beginning to sing my song. I don't want anything else. I don't, I don't want Naira. I don't want Hercules. I don't want Taitu. So many people have offered me titles. They have written me many times, Ragbile, we want to invite you for ecclesias, ecclesiological uh, ordination. I say, for what? For what? For what? What Peter did, what, what title did Peter have before they turned Jerusalem of right? These were ordinary barbarians. Do you remember? They even said these are barbarians. What's the meaning of barbarians? Aroko, Aroko. That's what they call them. These are people from the bush. They don't know how to write. They said, but that a notable miracle had been done by their hands, we cannot deny it. And when they looked at the boldness of Peter, they said, hmm... He had been with Jesus. That's the kind of credential I need. Don't need anything else. That's why all your reverend doctors, some who never finished secondary school, it doesn't impress me. I'm not interested. I'm looking for reality. Is there anybody in this class this night who is saying, I will give you no rest until you show me your glory in my generation? Is there anybody like that here? Then go in this your might. Is there anybody here who is tired of dead, dead formalism? As it was in the beginning, so it is now and forevermore shall be. Are you tired of such formalism? 
and you are looking for when heaven will interrupt all of that and the fire of the Holy Ghost will take over that altar go in this your mind There is a mobilization that the Holy Ghost is releasing to your life. And that is why he is making you unsatisfied. At the time I say, am I a sadist? Sometimes I'm asking, am I a sadist? Why is it that the things that make others to dance and do this, why is it that it only makes me to cry? Why will I not have rest? Simply because there's a crowd, a crowd of undecided, undecided church members. How can I rejoice that I have a crowd, a crowd where they are, they are sleeping with church members and choir members and you say they are Christians? No! When is the word of God going to come out again? That sinner man will begin to cry and say, What must I do? What must I do to be saved? How can I be delivered? Is there somebody in this meeting who will not accept empty explanation? For lack of power. Who will not accept empty story, empty rhetorics for lack of conviction? People tell me, hey, Brad, believe, when you preach so much about sin, nobody will come for your meeting. I said, let me test it. That's why you see, even though miracles are happening where we preach the word of God, we don't advertise miracles. I want to see those who will be hooked by the purity and the undiluted word of God if they will come. That's why I did not relocate to Lagos. I wanted to check whether the anointing of a John the Baptist in the wilderness is still available. Yes. I'm asking God, what is it that you did for John the Baptist that made people to leave city and they were trooping to the bush? Can you allow me to test it in my generation? God said, why not? If you want it. That's why I'm here. And so when I see people trooping, trooping from all over the world coming here, I say, yes, God, yes, God, yes, God. Something more is going to happen here. sitting here and you are not satisfied with empty drama and you are saying oh God I will give you no rest until you show me your glory is there anybody like that in this meeting this morning then go in this your might something is going to break forth by your hand this generation will, will, will be delivered out of hypocrisy by your hand in the name of Jesus Christ And when the angel heard him speaking, the Lord looked upon him and said, Go in this your might, and thou shalt save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Have I not sent you? God only commissions hungry people. God only shoots forth Men that are thirsty. Men that will not be satisfied with anything less than God. Men that are saying, if I don't see God, then I see nothing else. If you don't show forth yourself in my case, I will not let you go. And I perceive that in this class, there are young people they have been asking questions 
since they started hearing or reading the Bible. And they have been saying, where can I meet genuineness? I'm not impressed with this, with this masquerade. Sometimes a preacher will come out, he will wear a very big dress, and then he will say, hey, this is my wristwatch. It's a 50,000 naira. And you see, that's the sign that, uh, you know, God is moving. I say, keep your mouth shut. You know, it's just that I don't, you know, I, after some time, God says, just, just leave them, just leave them. Focus on what you are looking for. Otherwise, you will be hearing me fighting every day. I'm telling you. Can you imagine that I went to a meeting in Jaws some years ago? And I'm standing there preaching, and people are coming out, and they were weeping. I've not finished when someone said, Oh, Bragile, stop it. I want to repent now. And people started trooping out to repent, and they are weeping. And I mistakenly gave the microphone. I gave the microphone to the hosting pastor, whom I thought would be excited that people are repenting. I thought you would be excited that souls are trooping now to hand over their life to Jesus. Those that are having boyfriends, I will no longer go with that boyfriend again. My husband didn't know that I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, 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 I'm cheating him. I'm repenting this day. Let God have, and they are confessing openly. And I brought the pastor. I said, "Can you please lead these people to the Lord?" I thought I was doing well. When the man of God stood up, say, Stop it! Stop it! We don't cry in this church. When God says something to us, we clap for God. All of you, stand up, stand up, stand up, go back to your seat, and let's give Jesus a clap offering right now. If God has spoken something good, Put your hand in your pocket. Bring something sumptuous that make you to tell God that you appreciate him. You appreciate him. You appreciate him. Band, band, band. Oh yeah, come on, come on. Hi. My brothers, I couldn't sleep throughout that night. The hotel they put me is like they put me inside, inside Shangusha. Couldn't sleep. I said, God, what, what manner of place am I? That people don't rejoice for the souls that have been saved. The Bible says heaven rejoices for one sinner that has repented. But I've gone into a church where the salvation of souls, the conviction of sinners, only offended the pastor. I didn't know. So I prayed and prayed. I said, God, what do I do? Should I go back to Boko? The Holy Spirit said, no. You will preach again tonight. But when you preach next, don't call him to give out a call for you. I said, boy, he's the pastor. Why did he invite me? It was the following day I knew. So the following day, we got to the meeting. The man stood up. Before I would preach, he said, uh, you know what we are going to do tonight? They said, we don't know, sir. I said, yeah. So you know when Bragbile preaches, you can't take offering after his message. Because everything will scatter. Let's quickly take our offering. <laughs> Let's collect our offering quickly. So they dance and dance and dance until they collected all their offerings. When they finish, they say, now Bragbile, to you, whatever you now want to do, do with this congregation anyhow. It was then the Holy Spirit said, you see now, these are people that into the ministry to make a good living out of it. These are oxtails who are on the pulpit to make money. Say, preach now. Preach the word of God. So I did again. I was begging God that what happened yesterday night will happen again. I have not yet gone halfway my message when people started trooping out again and say, Yes, I surrender. Oh, I sur-. ah. 
and they were ruling on the ground. This time, I did not care whether the pastor was there or not. I gathered strength to draw the hook and to do the altar call and to pray. Since he has collected his offering, he's not worried about when we finish or when we don't finish again. I said, okay. So you know what happened? I didn't know that the word of God has hit him. I didn't know. I didn't know that he had been arrested. He couldn't sleep all. Early in the morning, he was knocking at my door. He said, Brad Billy, you hit me yesterday. I have been an hypocrite here. My life is not correct. It was adultery that made me run away from where I used to be. And as you were bringing the word of God the first day, I was offended because I was not going to collect offering. But by yesterday, you hooked me. I have not been able to sleep. What must I do to repent? Oh my God. My God. I said, ah, Holy Spirit, thank you. That was when the meeting turned because the man himself, when it now the third day, he came out, he said, Men and brethren, we used to joke with ourselves here. But now the truth of the word of God has come. I advise all of you to settle down, including myself. I am taking my life seriously now. Something is changing about me. I thank God. After, after some years, I jammed him somewhere again. It was, it was a different preacher altogether. He stood up, he said, Raguli, do you know when you encountered me in that place? That's when my life started. That's when my life changed. That's when I knew I am now in the ministry. Friend, is anybody in this meeting today who is dissatisfied? Who is distressed? with empty singing? Is there anybody who is not interested again in, 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 in stage managers, continuity announcers? See, we have come to church, a comedian, a comedian is the one running the show. Some of you are from churches where they will bring for 30 minutes comedians to come and make jests on the pulpit and they will pay him for doing that and they are telling you that that is how the spirit is moving nowadays no 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 I say no and if your heart is saying no to it and you are saying I'm looking for reality I'm looking for a new a, a move of God I'm looking for genuine repentance then go forth in this your might. You will see the glory of the Lord in the land of the living. God is going to show you his genuine power. Under your hand, you will see raw conversion of souls. You will see raw miracles. You will see raw, 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 raw provisions in the name of Jesus Christ. Gideon said, Oh my Lord, wherewith shall I save you? Say, what is in my heart? Behold, my family is poor in Manasseh. I am the least in my father's house. The Lord said to him again, Surely I will be with you, and thou shalt smite the Midianites as one man. God found a man that I can follow. May the Lord follow you out of this meeting. May the Lord confirm his word in your life. May the Lord stand behind you everywhere you go in the name of Jesus Christ. May the Lord surely, surely multiply your littleness, your ordinariness, so that the glory of God may break forth 
everywhere at a result of your obedience in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, but there was another young man whose life I would like you to see so that you do not make the mistake that he made. After that, I will just simply kneel down before God and say, Father, release them. As you did to Gideon, do to them. Gideon was nothing. But after that night, Gideon became a different man. Do you remember? Gideon became a different man. That same night, he gathered his uh, colleagues and friends and said, we are going to do something strange. They said, what is that? He said, follow me. He went to his father's house. Every useless strain of bar in his father's compound. What did he do? He said, if we wait till tomorrow, they won't let us do it. Let's do it in the night. When they wake up, let the damage already take place. Let's see what they will do. Uh -huh. So, he took ten men and they went and broke down the groups, broke down, scattered the altar, scattered everything. They were, Gideon was waiting for anybody to talk. In the morning, when people woke up and they found that their gods had been scattered, they found that their altar had been destroyed. They came out, they said, yes, Josh, where is your son? He's the one that destroyed this place. We're going to kill him. And the father said, excuse me, excuse me. Uh -uh. If Baal is a god who has power, what was he doing when this small boy was scattering his altar? If Baal was a real god that has power, that can save people, why can he not save himself from the damage that this boy has brought to him yesternight? Let nobody touch him. Let's wait for Baal to touch him. That's the day Gideon was given another name. What is his new name? Jeruba, Jeruba, Jeruba. You know the meaning of Jeruba? The conqueror of Baal. The man that disciplined Baal. The man that kicked Baal and rolled his head on the ground. Jeruba. So when he's passing, instead of calling him Gideon, they say, that's the man who's Kataba. Jeruba. That's the man who's Kataba. Jeruba. That's the man who, 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 who. That's it. You know, it has entered his CV now. They call him, they call him <laughs> Jeruba. 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 So when he blew a trumpet, 32,000 people came out. God said, well, we don't need 32,000. We only need 300 people whose hearts cannot satisfy with sitting down here drinking water. We are looking for people who are dead to pleasure. Who are dead to their selfish desires. Who are dead to anything else who are only crying to see the glory of God in the land of the living. Let me ask you again. Are those 300, are they in this class? Are they in this meeting? Are they in this meeting? Who are saying, if I perish, I perish. All I want, all I want is to see the Lord in his glory. I want to see the word of God come to pass. I want to see sinners saved. I want to see the kingdom of God established. Where are they? Where are they? Yes. Go in this your might. But now, in Second Kings, in Second Kings, you meet a man. You meet a man who was looking for power. Who wanted to take over the anointing that Elisha carried? 
Are you hearing me? Eh? He was looking for the anointing on Elisha. He learned that Elisha is on his way out. Somebody told him that Elisha is now sick with the sickness by which he will go to heaven. There's a vacancy for the anointing of Elisha. Ah, so this man, Josh, he quickly dressed up. He dressed up oh, and he was rushing to go and collect an anointing that he had no heart for. He rushed. In verse 14, 2 Kings 13 verse 14, please go there quickly, go there quickly. Are you there? Eh? Good. Now Elisha was falling sick of his sickness whereof he died. And Joash the king of Israel came down unto him and, and wept over his face. There are people here who may be weeping for anointing. But God is saying this one. He thinks anointing is for show. He thinks that what we are talking about is those who are looking for power for prominence. He thinks that those who, who broke uh, the fellowship on campus to start the fellowship in their, in their small hostel because he thought they would elect him as president of the fellowship and they did not elect him. He said, well, if they don't make me president, I'll make myself president. And he started his own. And he thinks that the kind of anointing we are talking about is for such self-promoted human being. He was kind. My father, my father. If you read your Bible, you will notice that the same exact word that Elisha used when he was to collect the anointing from Elijah. You remember? That's the same thing this boy was talking about. They have slogan. They have language. But they have no heart. I do trust God that you are sincere enough to know that here we don't cajole people. Did you notice that since you came here, since you came here, whom have we introduced with elaborate introduction among all of us who have been preaching? Eh? Talk to me now. For whom have we blew the trumpet when he is coming on the on the stage. Talk to me. Who have we announced and said, Papa is in the house. Papa is in the house. Papa is in the house. Have you ever seen something here? Eh? Why? We are asking for reality. If it is a dress, if it is costume that will make me a man of God, may God go away with that kind of anointing. I told you that brother John the Baptist was wearing ski. 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 You don't need to iron it. And he was living in the wilderness and he was eating locusts. That's all he was eating. And yet, Major General were coming. Big men were coming. Task collectors were coming. And he never greeted them with a special title and said, Oh, highly revered General. It's our privilege to have General worship with us this morning. All of you put your hand together in honor of a great general in the Nigerian army who has found time to attend fellowship this morning out of his busy schedule. Is that how, how, how 
John the Baptist introduce anybody? What, what, was his, what was his welcome comment? Oh ye brood of vipers! Who, who, who has told you to come here and listen? Listen! Could they go away? Could they go away? Say, and you, you, you claim that uh, Abraham is your father. Stop saying that! Stop saying Abraham is your father. Bring forth fruit that meet for repentance. Otherwise, the axe is laid on the root of every tree that God did not plant. God is able to raise out of the stones children for Abraham. Repent! <laughs> what kind of message is this? And the people did not stop coming. I say, God, if there's an anointing like that, anointing that does not beg audience, anointing that does not uh, sing for the audience, anointing that does not decorate anywhere so that people can say, oh, that's a wonderful place, that's a beautiful place. In fact, the ushers are very nice. They are highly dressed. And they, Have you seen any usher wear dress in this meeting? Do you think we don't know how to dress up ushers? We decided not to do that. If that's what attracts you, don't come here again. We don't need such. We don't need such a crowd here. We need people who are only hungry for God. Who came to see nothing but Jesus Christ. And who will not be satisfied with anything less than Jesus Christ. That's what we look for here. When you enter Goku, did you see Brother Gbile's photograph? Eh? As you will see your big man of God, you know, say, he welcomes you to the city. What does that mean? Let me ask you, did he die for you? Was he the one that was crucified for you? Was it in his name that you will be saved? So what is the need for his photograph? What is that idol worship? If your heart is crying for reality, if your soul is tired of gimmicks, if you are saying, oh God, I need, I need, you know, there are two words that, that, that is very difficult to talk about. The first word, people misuse it, revolution. But I choose not to talk about revolution because they will say he's a revolutionist. He's always causing revolution. No, I need revival. I'm looking for revival. But revival is nothing less than revolution. Revival will turn your life upside down before it will rearrange it for God. Revival will scatter all your lying until you face the truth. And God will start rebuilding you up. If you have been a 400 year level student and you have been cheating in the exam, when you come here, the word of God will hook you. Boom! And you say, hey, I cannot go back there again. We say, yes! Because the future before you, you cannot lay falsehood as your foundation. When you go back and say, no, I can't use this kind of certificate again, people will say, hey, are you foolish? Are you this? You will meet your pastors who say, ah, you know, that's why we tell you not to go to Boko. When you go to Boko, they will make you cry. You that you are already saved long ago, who told you you are saved? And you are saved and you are a fornicator. You are saved and you are not living right. You are saved, you are telling lies. You are saved, you are, you are living in falsehood. What kind of salvation is that? Say so you call his name Jesus for he will save his people from what? Uh, if he didn't save you from sin, then it's not Jesus. And this man came. Oh, my father, my father, my father, my father. I need double portion. I need double portion. I need double portion. Double portion. You see? And because Elisha 
Look at Elisha. He is desperately looking for where to drop this anointing. Because he did not intend to bury grace in the grave. Grace is not meant for grave. Grace is meant to be expended into people's lives, not to be buried in the grave. And Elisha was about dying. And all the disciples that he had raised, many of them have turned to be useless. Do you know one of his very, very important disciples that should have collected the, 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 the double portion of the anointing on Elisha? Do you know his name? Gehazi. But what did he look for? What did he look for? Hey! He was not looking for anointing. He was looking for, 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 for leper's coats. Leper's costume. He said, ah, my master speared this man. He didn't even collect his offering. Yeah, I'll, go, I'll go and collect something. No. And he ran. He was running on foot. He overtook a chariot. Very zealous to follow up pledges to follow up offering, to follow up uh, <laughs> and there are so many people all oh, they are looking for, they are not looking for genuine anointing, they are not looking for genuine power, they are not looking for genuine authoritative ministry of the word of God they are looking for goody goody and you see them moving up and down, moving up and down, say, yeah, 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 you know, uh, I am the associate to the man of God, uh, yeah, yeah, just to collect offering. Elisha looked at Gehazi and said, Gehazi, when test not my eyes with you, when the man came down from the chariot and loaded you with uh, leper's goods, is it time to collect clothes? Is it time to collect olive yards? It's not that you are not going to wear clothes, brother. You know I'm wearing clothes. It's not that you are not going to ride cars. You know I'm riding cars. It's not that you are not going to have houses. You know we have house. But the question is that, is it time? You that you have caught nothing, is it time? Imagine that Gehazi. They gave him the rod, the rod that has done wonders. But when he came to his own hand, the Yoruba man said, You know Akara, look Akara, is that little kose that they make with beans. Anybody can eat Akara because he doesn't have bones. Are you hearing me? But when Akara gets into the mouth of a toothless man, <laughs> What does he become? He become bone. He become a bone. He said, this thing is too hard. It's too hard. What, why is it too hard? He has no teeth. No teeth. They gave him a rod that could raise the dead. But he has a wrong life that evacuated power from that rod. So he carried it, he carried it there. He knocked the head of the dead child. Nothing happened. He knocked it again, nothing happened. He came by and said, the, the child never wake up. The child never wake. Thank God for the mother of the child. The mother of the child said, excuse me, I knew Gehazi before I knew you. I knew him. In fact, I was surprised when he started following you up and down. <laughs> That's why I refuse to follow him when you say I should follow him. I'm not ready to follow Gehazi. If you are not coming down with me, I will not let you go. So when Gehazi returns, I told you, Oga, the baby is in your bedroom. I'm not burying any dead baby. I didn't ask you for a child. I'm not one of those women that uh, is running up and down after a man of God for miracle. No. Hey, Elijah had no chance, no alternative than to follow the woman. And he had to pray until that be rose. Gehazi had no agenda for that. His agenda is to collect clothes, is to eat uh, booties, is to go for envelopes. 
Envelopes. Can you see some of you are singing now? You will never be singing for envelopes in the name of Jesus Christ. You know, there are some of your colleagues that are setting up banks. When you want to invite them for something, they will send a bill. You are familiar with them, isn't it? They have a bill. 24 crates of minerals. And we need to stay in an hotel we are 20 of us and we need at least 10 rooms. And our band leader, band commander, he stays in a suit. You know, we are also ministers. And you must think of sumptuous honorarium for us. Before we crank, before we crank the guitar, something must be on ground. And they have a special PRO who negotiates with the churches that are inviting them, bastardized singers. You will never be part of them in the name of Jesus. A new generation is rising. A new generation of worship leaders will arise who are not looking for money, but they are looking for God. Who sing to bring God down rather than to show their body. And a new generation is rising from this meeting. So, the man of God was so desperate. All the gases have gone. All the others that I thought I could give the anointing to, they are not interested. And this man is about dying. And he's saying, Lord, let me not be buried with this anointing. It's not meant for the grave, but there's nobody to collect it. So when Joash came and said, My father, my father, my father, my father, my father, my father. Gehazi. I mean, uh, Joash. So brother Elisha said, Well, I have no other person. So come, come, come. And he put his hand on his hand. This is what I call crash, crash program of emergency training for anointing. That's what some of you have been told. When you see a man of God, you just quickly go and lay your hands on me. Is that how they collect anointing? If not that you are confused. Where have you ever seen any genuine anointing coming on a stranger like you? You've never known a man of God. He has never known you. You have never... You have never sat under his ministry. You just want to say, oh, the man of God is coming. He has an anointing. Then you quickly go out and say, excuse me, excuse me. The Lord said you should lay hands on me and that uh, something will happen to me. And I'm laughing. I'm laughing. And he quickly brings an envelope. Excuse me. You know, this is the prophet offering. You know, and the Lord said, as you bless this offering, and you release, release, release something to my life. Release something to my life. Ha! And he needs that. And sometimes he carries my hand to put on his head. And I bring my hand and put it in my pocket. I say, that's not how we transfer the anointing here. Only those who have followed Jesus in discipleship concertedly they are the ones that Pentecost came on. Am I right? Elisha followed Elijah for 14 years before the double portion came on his head. Moses led and discipled Joshua for several years before God said, release your honor unto him. But now, you are growing in a very strange, strange, you know, I began to beg and say, lead me of strange children, strange children, strange, strange preachers, strange, strange. Everything about them is strange. They are strangers to the word of truth. They simply don't know what the word of God is saying. I said, what kind of thing is this now? Eh? One man of God came all the way from America some years ago. Oh God, God, I thank God. I thank God that God has delivered me from, from, from Mr. Flesh. I will, you will have known that I will be fighting everywhere. Ah! 
This man came and he said God told him to come and anoint one million, one million anointed preachers in Nigeria. One million in three in three days. And one of our own converts, the one I've been laboring on, who is in between standing and falling. I'm still sorting out her marriage. I will not give her Bible study in, my, in, our, in our discipleship meeting. She attended this meeting. Ha! And she came back. Reverend. And she was introducing herself to me. I said, Bragule, you know, in that meeting I've been ordained Reverend. I said, who ordained you? He said, you know, we went for this. I don't want to mention the man's name. It's too popular because some of you, you follow popularity. You don't follow heaven. So, he said, uh-huh. And you know, he came and, you know, there was this uh, uh, training, ministerial uh, training for excellent anointing and all of that. And after three days, in fact, this is the certificate and I've been ordained. I'm reverend. I told her, I said, I said, sister, I just call her, I just call her by the name I used to call her. I said, sit down. The issues we are raising with you over your marriage, you have not settled it. Are you being anointed on top of hypocrisy? Say, Bragule, you know, I don't like what you are saying. I said, if you don't like what I said, go away. Go away from here. She couldn't go. She couldn't go because she knew all of that is kajo. She knew that we really love her and that we are the people that care for her when she was running through trouble. About two or three years ago, after many years, she heard that I was preaching somewhere in the U.S. He said, Bragbile, I learned that you are in the country. I must come and see you. You are my father in the Lord. I said, am I still your father in the Lord? We don't care. If you want to go away, go. If the truth is the truth, whenever you need the truth, you will return to the truth. Because there is no other version for the truth. If anything is true, it's true. No other version. So this man said, my father, my father, is okay, come. Let's see whether you are ready for it. And as he put his hand, he said, put his hand on my hand, and he did yeah, open the window and they open the window. Yeah, shoot. He first told him how to shoot. Said the arrow of deliverance. And then he said, Now shoot. Because he had no heart. He has no purpose. He's not looking for something enduring. You know what he did? He shot once. He shot twice. He shot three times. And he stopped. And Elisha said, Ah! Why did you stop? you have wasted the opportunity of the people of God. You have now brought terrible problems to the people of God because you will conquer Syria thrice. After that, hey, they will finish your people. Why did you do that? The man of God was wroth with him. But there's no other opportunity of training someone else. So that's how Elisha died with the anointing in his bones buried many years after when they were trying to bury somebody who died and they were trying to dig a very shallow grave they did not know that it was the grave into which brother Elisha was buried was where they are dropping this dead corpse and the man jumped up an anointing that has been remaining in the grave for years that was still raising the dead now, I want to call you now. God is about to release something to your life. You must not cut it short. You must not disappoint your generation. If you are not serious, don't come out for this final commissioning. If you are not willing to go all the way with God, just sit back, just sit there. But you are saying, Lord, my heart has been stirred. I'm looking for reality. 
if you can use me lord to bring eternal change to my generation if it will please you lord that my campus will experience righteousness again lord i'm here i'm not coming for personal interest i'm not coming for personal gain i don't want a gayazi i don't need the blessing of a leper i need a genuine anointing that comes from heaven i need your god to set me on fire and set me going from this meeting i'm ready your god to go all the way for you all the way for you i will no more say but i'm a only a youth no 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 oh god there is a woman you anointed and she sang and demons were going away and things were opening they were not singing for money lord i am here again this this voice you are giving me this ministry of worship you are giving me is not going to be for food it's not going to be for chop chop i'm not going to learn bad manners lord consider me tonight release upon me release your power upon me set me on fire oh god set me on fire oh god set me ablaze oh god set me ablaze oh god set me ablaze oh god if your heart is for such a thing stand up stand up and step out before god tonight and say lord here am i here am i lord send me here am i oh god here am i oh god as you raise a gideon as you set him on fire as you release him to go for you lord send me oh god send me oh god my generation will not go down the drain my generation will not go down the drain my generation will not perish maria la ba 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 sando robots reko toko robots yanta ba 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 Rema Surya, Remo Sanda Yaba Kondo Robosi, Zekeria, Zombo Robo Shenda Makondo Roboskila, Lord Robo Sanda Baba Baba Baba, Rakuria Lakatao Yama Makondo Roboskai, Zeburia, Zeboroch, Yakato Robo Samba Robosai, Yanta Korimo Simba Korimo She, Yato Robo Surya, Maria Laba, Ramo Toko Sembo Robosh, Masua Raba Kanto Yorobo Sai, Zamara Yanta Korobo Si, Rima Sanda Baba Kondo Robo She, Yeke Teke, Remo Sa, Remo Sa, Rako Torio Robo Sai, Yanta Kariaka Baba Baba Baba, Ramo Sai, Yanta Kasanda Bakondo Robo Saila, Remo Sanga Tao Yamama, Rosai, Remo Sai, Yanta Kosia, Rosaka Yo, Morobo San. Rakota, Rakato, Master Rabashiria. Let the heavens open. Let the heavens open, O oh God. Let the heavens open tonight, O oh God. Let the heavens open, O oh God. Thou, o Lord, who knows. Thou who knows. Thou who knows. Thou who knows. Where's all my weakness? Thou know Where's all my care? While I plead Him from promise Yeah, oh yeah Answer my prayer Thou know Thou know Where's all my weakness? Thou know Where's all my care? As I plead it Precious promise I want all the senior friends All the resource persons It is time for you to stand Please stand and lift up your hands that God Almighty will open the heavens. That something will happen in this meeting. That this young man will go on fire. Terebo Sanda Yaba Baba Baba. Rosata Yarama Sondo Robo. Masokurie Yeteke Zebo Rakuria. Remo Sanda Baba Kaurama Shiria. 
rekuria zakateye borobo na sombo koto rekuria la masanda yekeria masanda makondo robo shiria release oh god release release let the heavens be open tonight let the heavens be open tonight set this one so god on fire set them ablaze so god make them answer to the cry of nigeria make them the answer to the cry of your church make them an answer oh god rasata yaba kondoro rebo sana baba 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 Yirima sanda robo Ah Rima sanda yaba Moseke de yerebo Masuri ala bashiria Zobo robo Zebo robo Holy Spirit Holy Spirit Holy Spirit tonight Tonight Let the heavens open Let the heavens open let the heavens open. Be gracious to us tonight. Be gracious unto me, your servant. Not Gehazis. Not Gehazis. Gehazis we punish. We punish the anointing. It will cause a setback to your servants. Lord, I beg you this night that there will arise among here songs, songs, songs that will take this matter forward. Children that will take this issue beyond. Children that will see your glory break forth. Who are looking for something new, something genuine. Rema Sanda Bakaura Mashiria. Zemorobo Sanda Babakaura Masila. Jekuria Masanda Bakorobo Sila. Hejekete Yerebo. Lord. 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 Lord, Lord, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus. Holy Ghost, let the heavens open tonight. As you commissioned Gideon and you sent him forth, though he look ordinary. It look mere. It look in obscurity. But that's your mind. As you located David. And you set him on fire. Because you found a man that you can work with. Will you please Lord. Locate your servants in this place. Open the heavens. Open the heavens. Lord I beg you tonight. Open the heavens is moving in this meeting the Holy Spirit has come something is going to be released upon your life because it is time for God to move it is time for God to revive his people there is going to be a restoration on our campuses genuine repentance will come back God is going to visit the campus again. Serious repentance, genuine conviction and conversion with the demonstration of the power of God to save, to heal, to develop, I mean to deliver shall come upon you. In the name of Jesus. Now, my first cry this night I know God is going to help us. Listen. 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 My own first cry tonight. I have two cries. When God has mobilized Gideon, some 32,000 ran after him. But their hearts were not right. They have private agenda. God said they will, they will, they will, they will be puffed up, and they will, they will 
arrogate themselves against me. And God said, let me, let me say to them, let me sort them out for you. You don't need 32,000, only 300 whose hearts have been circumcised. They are the ones I will use with you to do this job. You are going to pray, Lord, whatever can disqualify me from this, from this momentous outpouring for me to affect this generation, rather extracted from my life i cannot miss where you have brought me i cannot go back home struggling with nothing you brought me here because something must happen with my life you brought me here because you are about to do a new thing lord don't send me back tell god don't send me back don't send me back empty-handed don't send me back empty handed I am part of this Gideon's army anything that will make it impossible for you to work with me extract it, extract it this night it's not too late for God to remove it is there the love of money in your heart do you love envelopes that thing they collect when they go to preach that thing they look for when they go to sing. They are saying, Lord, the love of money must not disqualify me. The love of women must not disqualify me. Because when the Lord will move, many women will be coming. Many young ladies will be affected. And you are saying, oh God, I am not going to fall a victim of women. No Jezebel will capture me. Don't send me back. I want to go with you. If you are in the congregation and you are standing and the Spirit of God is speaking to you and say, Don't sleep now. Stand up and make things right. Just do it. Just do it. It might be impossible for you to all come to the altar, but the Spirit is going to meet you where you are. It's going to affect you where you are. If your heart is here. Are you in the gallery? Stand up and say, God, don't pass me by. Don't pass me by. While you are touching others, while you are helping others, while you are anointing them, don't pass me by. Don't pass me by. Do not pass me by. Rakashata yama koroboskuri. Zembarata yata koroboskila. Zemuria. Zantaba robo sambarabash. Makuria Lama Santo Robo Samba Baba In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Did you hear what I said? Don't send me back. Father, don't let any appetite, any desire for pleasure, any secret thing that I don't even know now that may want to hinder you and you saw it don't let it send me back rather rather oh god make me fit make me fit for your use make me fit for your use make me fit oh god please lord take me in holy ghost Holy Ghost, thank you for tonight. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Here he can He can yalaba sanda ba 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 kondo roboshir. In Jesus' name, we are prayed. Now, there's another second prayer. It's a very serious prayer. All of you should listen to me. Serious prayer. I have never asked anybody to pray like that before. Do you know all the years of discipleship that Elisha invested on Gehazi was wasted? Did you hear that? And 
he listen you need to listen so that you can pray well tonight all the exposure that the servant of God gave Gehazi so that he could take over <coughs> and carry the purpose of God forward to the next generation because there is no anointed man that will not die there is no man of God who is on the stage forever and the reason why God has called us to engage in concerted discipleship is that we may have replacement sons but Gehazi made the man of God barren at his death and I'm afraid that there will be people that we lay our lives down for. That we gave all that we knew so that they could step into genuine anointing for the next generation. Who will make us barren at the point of our death? Who will make us to now go for those that are just emergencies as if we have been wasting time for years. This was the punishment that Gehazi brought upon Elisha. This night, I have been begging God that you will not be baskets. That none of you that is standing here that God is causing us to pour our lives into will be a mere basket. Yeah. You will not be a Gehazi yeah. who has no value for eternal things. Yeah. Who only look for what he can eat, what he can wear, what he can drink for the moment. That God will give you a heart for the enduring anointing. Yeah. That you will carry what we are carrying. Yeah. We have been carrying this for several years waiting that God will raise young men and women who will carry this kind of anointing to go and do exploit for God in their generation. So we are going to pray now. Father, I will not be a disgrace. I will not be a basket. And I will not be a punishment to your purpose and to your servants in the name of Jesus. Plead with God. Whatever will make a Gehazi out of your life, let the Lord take it away. That each one of you that God is bringing and is introducing you into discipleship, is talking to you about following, is talking to you about learning, sitting at the feet of the Lord until your life is made. You are going to cry to God, Lord, never will I be a Gehazi. Until I get the reality, I will not go for peripherals. Father, Father, tonight, Solomon, can you help me sing that song? That will know West all my weakness down no West all my cares I am praying each precious Savior now here and prayer down no All the resource person you need to pray now. Pray that this one will not be a precious promise. Pray that our labor will not be vain. Pray that the Holy Ghost will undertake for us that we know. Oh, 
while I plead each precious promise yeah, oh, yeah. an answer oh, prayer oh, oh, Lord you know I saw my weakness Lord you know I saw my care while I plead each precious promise yeah oh yeah an answer prayer now all of you lift up your hands now no You know my weakness. Thou know all my care. Yes, all my cares. Yes. While I plead, when I'm pleading each precious promise, yeah, oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah, my prayer, an answer prayer. Your two hands lifted above your head. Thou know, yes, all my weakness. You know my weakness. You know my future. Lord, you know. You know all about me. You know where I'm going. Answer my cares. Father, answer my prayer tonight. Answer While my prayer. I plead Send me forth in your name. Precious to obey you. To do away with every wrong thing. And let the heavens open. And answer prayer. One more time. Lord, you know. While I plead precious promise Yes Lord Jesus An answer prayer Yes Lord Jesus I saw my weakness Lord you know I saw my care Father let the heavens go put tonight let heavens be open. While I plead, release, release them, Lord. Precious release promise. them by your power. Yeah, Set their heart on fire. Yeah. Set them on pilgrimage. Set them not be satisfied with the, the lowly place. Lord no satisfied with where doubts arise, where fears to stay. Higher grand they must go. Higher grand. Higher Lord, you know. Higher grand their lives must go. My Lord Jesus, I'm trusting you. I'm trusting you. While I that every come to us from the sanctuary today, this life will turn around for yeah, you. Oh, yeah. They will serve your divine purpose, oh God. And they will cause your will to be done in the land of the living. Hallelujah. Yeah, oh, yeah. Hallelujah. And Hallelujah. Prayer. In the name of Jesus. Yeah, oh, yeah. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Can you put your hand on your head? Put those two hands on your head now. Father, I ask you tonight. Open the heavens. Open the heavens, O oh God. That which you have been keeping, that which you have been storing, that which you have been reserving for a time like this. Nigeria has come to the to the critical point. Church has come into a very difficult situation. Our schools are in terrible problems. Strange children. Wide future. The pulpit has not been spared. The sanctuary has been polluted. But here we are this night. 
open the heavens release 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 yourself upon these lives tonight in the name of Jesus Christ I kneel down before you Lord and I plead that this once oh God might be acceptable to you that they might be the ones that your heart can go with in the name of Jesus Christ I plead with you Lord that such anointing that you have been reserving for years that you have been reserving oh God for days like this let it please you oh God when it was time for that young man to be anointed you told the servant he said that meat I kept for I ask you to keep aside it's for this boy Lord that which you have been reserving for this time many singers have been singing little time when they sang and they became celebrities they became businessmen looking for money waxing album only to make money and you have pegged their voices you have kept them somewhere and you say my church will not sing their songs again but lord here i stand with you tonight that which you are reserving for this end time let it please you tonight to begin to release it even if this is only to begin a very concerted discipleship of their lives release it in the name of jesus christ lord i ask you tonight as you helped gideon and you sorted out those who will have hijacked your purpose i know you have been sorting things out in our midst but your mercy will not allow you to turn us back and say go away from here since you have admitted our hearts since you have been working to bring us into repentance now father admit this once in the name of jesus father i remember oh god that you have done such a thing before in the days when jacob was about to go and joseph brought his two sons these two sons they were supposed to be grandchildren but there's a vacancy Reuben has been disqualified and you need to complete the 12 tribes and so you adopted Ephraim and Manasseh and that Ephraim will even be senior though Manasseh was ahead he said no 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 Ephraim will be senior and greater than Manasseh because you saw what Manasseh can be tonight oh God even if these children sitting here they appear like grandchildren or they may even appear as great grandchildren please lord i drop them into the lineage of the anointing lord i plead with you tonight that you will give them a portion among the fathers because of the assignment that they must carry out Give them a space, oh God, tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I ask you, oh God, those of them that are girls in their midst, like Selophuad's daughters, girls that are interested in the inheritance of the fathers. Lord, I ask, admit them into this inheritance in the name of Jesus Christ. I plead with you tonight, oh God, that this one will begin to become the answers to the cry of Nigeria in the name of Jesus Christ. That in every sector, oh God, in the realm of academics, in the realm of business, in the realm of politics, and now, oh God, in the sanctuary, in the realm of the sanctuary, adopt them in the name of Jesus Christ. And every trainee they need. Lord, I remember, oh God, this thing was about happening in the days of Elijah. 
there was this Elisha, but a mantle came on him, but it's only for discipleship. And yet you said that is the prophet. Lord, tonight I'm asking. Whatever ignorance is in these lives, they are young at heart, they have never been instructed. They didn't know their left from their right. But because they have not bowed the knees to bow, you have decided, you said, go for them, go for them. Tonight, Lord, I lift up my voice unto you in the company of all our brothers and sisters, the resource persons, that, Lord, it will please you to adopt this one into the lineage of what is about to happen in the name of Jesus Christ. I ask, Lord, that you will accelerate their growth. Their exposure to yourself. Their intense desire to know you. Their hunger for the reality of God. Increasing from tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. They will no longer have appetite for gimmicks. They will no longer be interested in empty show. They will not look, oh God, for what worldlings look for. They will see your glory in the land of the living in the name of Jesus. Lord, you say, go in this your might. Father, I'm asking. They look as if they are weak. They appear as if there is nothing in their hands. But you see already a heart that you can work with. So Lord, release them into your fullness. Send them forth in your power. Release the spirit of God. The teacher will teach you as you go. The teacher will teach you as you move now. The mighty hand of God will rest upon your life from this night. You will never be a casualty. That thing that affected Gehazi and he mortgaged what could have been a, a, a double portion of the anointing on Elisha, which will have been four times of what this other man carried. But he exchanged it for leper's clothes. I speak into your life tonight. Leper's dress, Babylonian garments, like it went and finished the life of Achan in those days, shall have no attraction for your life. Every strange desire for empty prosperity that people are pushing into your heart from this night, it will evaporate in the name of Jesus Christ. Your cry will be for God. Your cry will be for His power. Your cry will be for His holiness. Your cry will be for His presence. And for the days and rest of your life, the hunger of your life will be unquenchable. As you have begun to seek God, you will ever love to see Him. Working with God will be more interesting to you now. Your private closet will be a place of divine encounters. <clears throat> and the word of the Lord will never be scarce in your mouth. He said, Behold, I put my word in your mouth. The word of the Lord will come upon you now. The word of the Lord will come to you now. The revelation of Jesus by the word of God will set on your life. And everywhere you go, God will use you to uproot evil, to uproot wickedness, to pull down hypocrisy. Your fellowships will turn around. Even if you are just a Bible study leader, there will be conviction under your meetings. Genuine conversion will attend to your lives. Everywhere you go, there will be a note of a divine visitation. In the name of Jesus Christ. As the Lord will pilot your life, whether in business, in economy, the Lord will take you to the heights. And yet your interest will be the kingdom of God. Money will not strangulate you. Money was what finished Judas Iscariot. 
He had already obtained a portion of this ministry. But money finished him. 30 pieces of silver ended his own destiny. I speak into your life tonight. Mama will not finish you. As God gave me victory over money, the Lord will give you victory over mama. Money will not be interesting to you. You will look for true riches. True riches in the name of Jesus Christ. We send you forth in the name of the Lord. Go and be fruitful. Go and multiply. Go and turn your generation. Go and turn your campus around. Go and burn for God in the name of Jesus. Whether by singing, by preaching, by teaching, by whatever you do, you shall prevail. The Lord Almighty will cause you to prevail. Thank you for hearing our prayer. And unto you, O Lord, who is able to keep and sustain, do I commit these lives. In keeping law, you will keep them. Some of them appear young, but they are not young in your eyes. We will hear of them in the name of Jesus Christ. You will break forth on the left, on the right. The Lord will make a way for you. The Lord, I say, will make a way for you. Your Jordans will part way before you in the name of Jesus Christ. Mountains will become a plain before you in the name of Jesus. Your academics will never be a disaster. You will be a sharp sword in the hand of God. Father, we turn their story around so that glory will attend to your name because of them. Thank you, Father, for hearing us. And I dare say tonight, they will not die young. It was Samson's mother that said, if God wanted to kill you, he will not tell us this. None of you came here to die. You are going to live. You will declare the glory of the Lord in the land of the living. Your journey in life, you will never be crippled. There are some dangerous women that are posted on the path of those who are meant to be great. Women like Jezebel, women like Delilah, they will not find you in the name of Jesus Christ. The one that God is preserving for your life shall come your way in the name of Jesus Christ. From this meeting, I declare your marriages will be correct. All the lessons you learned about marriage, about how to choose, it shall settle in your heart. It shall prepare you for greatness. Those of you that are on the verge of marrying, the Lord Almighty will correct and reestablish your foundations. Thank you for hearing this prayer. And as you go, you will go well in the name of Jesus Christ. From victory to victory, you will rise. From glory to glory, the Lord will transform you. Your hunger for discipleship, God will meet it. Your desire to learn Christ, God will provide for it. Thank you for this night. Lord, this is the right point at which to release your people. Send them forth by your power. Cause their heart to bubble with the fire of the Holy Ghost. Cause their heart to bubble for, for souls in the name of Jesus. When they return on campuses, oh God, they are going with a, as a, is another man. Everyone that will see you, they say, ah, ah, what has happened to Saul? Is Saul also among the prophets? But who is their father? This night, oh God, as you go, the signature of the Almighty God will rest upon your life. Thank you for hearing. Now, Lord, I sanctify their journeys. Every vehicle they will enter, Father, we trust you that they will travel safely. We are not going to hear stories of casualties. In the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, as they go, it shall be well with them. It shall be well with their lives. 
it shall be well with their parents some of their parents are saying we don't know why he has been going to this boko lord you will vindicate these boys and girls even before their parents in the name of jesus christ and some of you you will carry this fire beyond the shores of this nation god will send you to the ends of the earth to go and burn and shine for him he will make a way for you in the name of jesus christ thank you lord thank you lord thank you lord thank you lord thank you for you are faithful thank you that you watch over your word to bring it to pass thank you thank you